time. Uh, here's a little quick tutorial on how to use these uh, samples with a slate trigger. Um, first, you know, if you watched my video on uh, recording, you'll know that I'll us I usually created a trigger track for my snare drum and my kick um, in order to uh, trigger easily with trigger with slate trigger. But you can actually do this off of the original snare. It's it it works really well. I'm just really particular and make sure that every hits in there perfectly and it, it's easier to um, trigger. So the way you start is you open up your slate trigger and you go to the browser and you look for Yash Drum Warehouse, which you have to put in there. That's a whole nother story and Mike, John Mike's gonna tell you how to get it in there. Um, it's not that, it's not hard at all. <clears throat> and so on this particular song or this drum track that I've been listening to, the snare's a little weak. So I'll show you what the track sounds like with no samples or anything in it. it sounds pretty good. I, I added a little bit of uh, top end of the snare and I may, there may be a point where I um, duplicate the snare and compress one of the snares and add some verb and stuff. But right now I just want to show you how Slate Trigger works. So I would open up Trigger and go to the browser and open up Yash Drum Warehouse, open up the snares. And in this case, I'm going to use uh, one of the ones that's called Session Snare. And I'm gonna use the one with Session Snare with Rim. And I'm gonna dump it in the first two slots. And the reason is because when I go over to the next page, which is called Triggering, I can have a dry snare and I could have just room only snare. And I can also have options of dry, snare with overhead, snare with room, snare with room only, snare room only. In this case, I'm just gonna mess around with uh, using this dry snare with a little, with the overheads mixed in with it. And then I can control the level of the room sound and it'll sound like this. And mainly I'm using it to, to, to get the ambience without adding reverb. Because I like that natural tone of the, of the ambience of the snare. And I could, you know, I could turn up more room like that, depending on how it fits in the track. I'm not sure yet. We're just kind of analyzing overall drums right now. Um, so, and then if I felt like maybe that's a little too thin and I want to add some more bottom, I might look for another snare. And I know that this, there's a snare called Nashville snare, um, which has a little bit of thickness to it. So I'll go, I'll go to, I'll create another trigger track right here. And I'll go in the snares, find the Nashville snare. And I like the one with the rim. So I'll drag this down. And I'll go back to triggering. We have dry with overhead, dry with room. And it sounds like this. And I'm mixing these together. And it added a little more low end to it. So right now I'm kind of, I'm listening blind without listening to the whole track, but I kind of know what the whole track sounds like. So I know that this combination is gonna sound fairly nice inside this track. Um, with a, we've got the original snare, we've got a snare that has a nice tight high end uh, snap to it, and then another snare that has some low end, and I'm going to mix them together, and I'll decide the relationships later as I'm listening to the whole track. I'll start blending um, these back and forth until I get the, the feel that works the best for this particular tune. So once you get a sound, it's easily saved in Trigger. Um, and I've actually saved some of these settings already, so I, I can go in here and look. And I actually have um, what I call Yash Snare, <laughs> Nash Snare, and I'll, I can just call it up, and I can I have it saved. And if it works on another song, it works on another song. If it doesn't, we'll try another one. 
Um, and I save this one over here. This one's called Session Snare. And easily recallable. And there we go. And uh, obviously I can change the room sound, room tone, which I think works pretty well right about there. Um, but I can't play you this track because who knows who it is. Might be somebody famous. It might be one of John Mike's productions. I know this is just a short tutorial on drum sampling, but you can get a, a fuller look at um, how I mix drums into tracks on um, gospelproducers.com. I have a class there. Uh, and um, also you can get all these samples and more at gospelproducers.com.